awaken to the reality in the spirit, God. Let us awaken to the reality where we sit in heavenly places, God. Let us awaken to the reality of who we sit next to in the spiritual realm, God. Let us awaken to the reality of who, we're, who we are one with in every which way, God. Because, God, you're not sleeping, God. God, you're not shutting out what is true, Lord. But you're awakening us, Lord, to the truth, God. You're awakening us to what is true, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're taking this reality that we see in the flesh, Lord, and you're giving us a new reality of what is true in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. In the spiritual realm, the truth is greater than the, than, the, than, the, than, the, than the realm of the natural. The reality in the spirit is greater than the reality that is, of this, that is in this world. That we see what we see, what we hear, what we do. What is in the spiritual realm is greater than that. And what is in the spiritual realm controls that. And it's funny, Shane was standing there and, and saying what he said, and Elaine was saying what she said yes the other day, and Shane preached what he preached last Sunday. And I really feel, and this is what the name, this is what I'm, whatever if you want to call the title, I'm not even worried about the title right now. But God is saying, build yourselves up in the Lord Jesus Christ. Build yourselves up. In the Lord Jesus Christ. That sounds great. But we need to know what that means. We need to know how to do it. Because we will come and we will see the, we will see the Bible. We will see the word. We will see it. <clears throat> Can you get me a water somebody? We will see its magnificent glory. We will see <clears throat> the power and authority. We will see everything that is possible through Christ. That all things are possible through Christ. But that tomorrow, the devil comes in the mind and gives you one line, you're done. Then you get back. Then you're back again. And then the devil comes again. Then you're done. And then you're back again. Over and over and over again. Then you get some freedom and God moves. And then one thing, one thing comes. Thank you, Elaine. We have a spirit. We have a flesh. We have a soul. And we need to know how that works. Or else we're in trouble. Because if we move by our soul realm, we get into sensuality and the lust of the flesh. If we move by the spirit... We reap of the Spirit. Many churches don't even teach people how to do this. And many churches are exalting people in Christ, but they're exalting people in Christ in the flesh. Many people, many pastors and teachers are exalting people and giving them all of God's promises and authority, but they're doing it without dead to, deadness to self. They're doing it with regards to this body. Now this body reaps, don't get me wrong, this body reaps what my spirit reaps and is controlled by God, but when I'm not living in the spirit and I'm living in the flesh, yet trying to reap what is spiritual, then I see nothing. And that's why you have people that, that come to their refrigerator and they have all these promises on their refrigerator and they've had it for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years and they haven't seen nothing come to pass yet. Because they're trying to do it in the flesh. They're trying to do it without the cross. They're trying to do it without the blood. They're trying to, many people, trying to reap the prosperity of God without the truth. And truth is important. Truth is our, is our armor. Without the truth, we can be standing in Christ one day, 
and then the next day fade away or be, be pushed to and fro by every wind of doctrine because of we're not putting on the armor through the truth. Many people are being pushed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Well-mean Christians with good hearts. But I'm telling you this, it's not just about having a good heart. It's not just about wanting it. It is about wanting it, and that's where it starts. But you need to take the truth, and you need to exalt it every time the, de the devil comes. And you need, to exalt it. you need to exalt it for all of your life. That's your job. Your job is to, is, to, is to exalt the truth. And when you exalt the truth, you're reaping in the spirit. When you exalt the lies, you're reaping in the flesh. So, what do we need to do? We need to know truth and know nothing else and, and cut out lies. And the biggest way to cut out lies, because we have many people that in the church, they're instead of being spirit led, they're being head led. They're being head led. You know what that means? It means they get a way of doing something, a formula, they get a step-by-step -step thing, they get a way, a way that they think that is right to them, and they keep trying to follow a process. This is called religion. This is called being dictated by the soul. The cross teaches me how to be led by the Spirit. Because the cross gives me a new heart. And what is my heart? My heart is my spirit. So when I'm going by that, I'm going by, the, by where my spirit who is one with the Holy Ghost and I'm led by that. Amen. And I'm led without understanding of this world. <clears throat> and I'm no longer being led by knowledge. I'm no longer being led by, by, by information. I'm no longer being led by numbers. I'm being led by the Spirit of God Himself. And I need to know nothing but that. Any truth that doesn't get you to rely on the Spirit of God and nothing else is no truth at all. Any truth that gets you to rely on a system, a mindset, it's not, it's not truth, it's religion. Religion is is the worldliness, the world's ways acting as if it's God's ways. And this is why Paul said, Christ and Him crucified, only that. Because when I'm in Christ and Him crucified, I'm washed and I'm put off from the old man, and through the resurrection of Christ, I am put on with the new man. And in that truth, which is not knowledge of the world, but is knowledge of God. See, the knowledge of the world gets you to lean on what you see and what you hear. But the knowledge of God gets you to rely on God himself. It's the foolishness to man. Because why? Because man can't do it in its own strength. Because man can, because when you rely and move in the knowledge of God, the only, your only job is surrender and nothing else. And that's why religion hates the truth. Because they, they think there's always something they need to do. What you need to do is you need to get rid of yourself and just let him do it. Get rid of your mindsets. Get rid of all your processes. Get rid of all your mindsets that lead you. See, many people are mindset led. Many people are driven by their soul. Your soul is your mind. When you're driven by your mind and what you think, and you're, this, that's because what religion does is it brings mindsets. It brings ways of doing it in your mind. 
And then guess what? Then I'm led to rely because everything that because everything that the world teaches, every mindset, every process, everything that you that it teaches you, it gets you to rely somehow on the flesh. Gets you to rely on what I mean by I'm talking about this outer being, something out here. Doing something out here instead of doing something in here. And this, sounds, this all sounds like normal information to us, and we've heard many of these things. But sometimes we get so wrapped up in, th in ways of thinking and mindsets that then we start being led by our head again and our soul that we're not bringing our soul into submission to the Spirit. Then we start missing God in every instance of our life. Then we stop... Then we, we, we have a season of the Holy Ghost moving in our life. Words of knowledge, all types of things. And then we're like, what's going on? Why am I dry? What's going on? I thought I had the power and anointing. What's going on is, you probably turned on the television. Because I've done it many times. I've turned on YouTube. I've turned on other people. And I listen to them. Because I'm not trusting God to do it. Because I'm trusting some man that can come up with some way to get me free. When the truth of God is Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and that's my leading to be set free and led by the Spirit, and then I'm trying to come, come up with something outside of that, even if it sounds like the cross. If it sounds like the cross, but it adds to the cross, to the finished work, run from it. If it takes away from the cross, run from it. That's right. If it says you're, it's, if it proclaims, it can proclaim the blood of Jesus and the death, but yet not proclaim the resurrection. <clears throat> and then you become legalistic. Or we got the other side where you proclaim the resurrection, but you're not, what, and people are not proclaiming the death. And then you got people in false grace, thinking they can have it all without. Getting, being, out, coming out of the flesh. I wish I would have brought my phone. My phone died. I had the scriptures on there. Oh well. <laughs> but Paul said. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll write them in the comments. I like a little script. Yeah, I know. I just this once. There's a few scriptures I don't know what chapter it is, but well, he says it. This when I'm talking about this scripture here, he says it multiple times. So go go to the book of Romans. He says, Paul speaking, and he says, and I serve God. He doesn't. I'm paraphr I may be paraphrasing, but this is what he says, and, and we can go look at it later if you really want to. Whom I serve in my spirit, not by my flesh. So what does that mean? Who I serve by my spirit, not by my flesh. And you see that right there. That right there, if you don't understand that, that's what brings many misconceptions of the gospel. That's what brings many, that's what brings false doctrines here and there when you don't know that part right there. Romans 1, 9. Oh yeah, 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 that's right. I, I do remember that. Good stuff. Romans 1, 9. Isn't that the one where he says... Uh, whom, whom uh, confirms in my conscience or something? What is that? Let's read it. Uh, God, whom I serve in my spirit in preaching the gospel of his son, is my witness how I constantly remember you. Amen. All right. And it mentions it. I it said serve in my spirit. In my spirit. My yeah, exactly. He says it many times. And there's a reason why he says it. There's a reason why he says it. Is this? This died. Oh well. Oh, I need this something on here. Yeah, we, we don't really need it. <laughs> yeah, you're loud. Right. Yeah, you don't right. need it. I don't need it. Yes, no. No, go ahead. You're loud. So God, whom I serve in my spirit. That's important. It's an important thing. God. Created everything that you see. But how 
Did he create you? That's important. How did he create the, the, uh, a human? He spoke it. He spoke it. Spoke it. <laughs> he spoke it. Yes. <laughs> There's no process there, right? But listen. He created Adam. He created Chase. He created Victoria as a spirit. And what he did with that spirit is he allowed that spirit to possess a soul. And now you live in a body. What we have in the church is people identifying themselves with their body instead of identifying themselves with their spirit. And this is, and I told this to Chase and we laughed for like 20 minutes on the phone yesterday. And I don't even know I was even going to speak about this, but you know what I told him? I said, you know what it means? You know what that's like? That's like if I went in my house, right? And I identified myself as a house, but I'm really inside the house. You understand what I'm saying? A spirit in a body. I'm a, I am a spirit. I live in a body. But if I'm identifying myself with this body and not by my spirit, that's like me identifying as a house instead of the person that's in it. Mm -hmm. It sounds funny, but it's true. No, it's true. It's equivalent. No, it's true. And that's how stupid is that? If, I, if you came over to my house and I said from the inside, here I am, look at me. Look at my shingles. Look at my, look at my front door. You know, well, you know, that's my body. No. Nobody would do that, right? right? Who's that? The guy in the um, um, the, the, the <laughs> who? <laughs> it was the last one. The the, the, the fanta uh, not the fantastic. No, one. no, he lives in. The, he's the rich guy that has the. I think he gets oh. the robe that comes on him. Oh, Iron Man. Oh yeah, 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 Iron Man. Yeah, oh, okay. that. Oh, that's good. I like that. That's like Iron Man identifying. He's a human. The, the guy was a human, right? That's like him identifying himself with the metal that's around him. And he says, he says I am Iron Man. That's really not <laughs> oh my goodness. But is it not true? Yeah. And because of that twist, even a little twisted thing, we have misconceptions. And we say, and we, and, we, and we identify with Christ in the spirit. And we identify with Christ because it says we're a new man now, right? And then we're living. And then our flesh kicks in. And we're like, wait, I'm a new man. How am I thinking this thought? Where's this coming from? How did I get hit with I thought I was a new man. I thought I had pure thoughts. I had, thought I had the mind of Christ. What happened? Why, is my, why am I getting something here in my body here? What's going on with my body? Why, I thought I was healed. What's going on? You don't own this body. You don't own it. That's, it's not you. Feel your skin right now. You feel it, right? But it's not you. You are the spirit that's inside the body. So when God says that you are my son... Without spot or wrinkle, you are one with Christ, holy and beloved. He's talking about your spirit. Amen. Because if you think it's your flesh, then you're going to be like, some things are going to be happening. You're going to be like, I don't believe the Bible. It's not true. Because I'm, I'm believing that. But does that mean now we can do whatever in our body, but our spirit's saved? No. And that's where the other misconception is. The point in this is that we need to learn how to build up the real me, which is a spirit, so that it can take over the soul and the body. And my real man that's inside can manifest to the naked eye. That where my actions are parallel to who I am in the spirit, where, my, where the way I do things and what I say and how I move is just how I have in the spirit, by, by the spirit of God in the spirit. He says, I'm one with you. 
Yes, he is one with you in your spirit. But when you see this, then, you, then, then discernment kicks in. When you see this, then you start feeling, the, then the presence of God kicks in. When you see it like this, then the authority and the power moves and you know how to move when he moves. And you know how to think how he thinks. And you know how to do how he does. When I live by my spirit, the mind of Christ, <laughs> that's blessed. The mind of Christ, <laughs> oh man, praise God. Wow. <laughs> The mind of Christ is in is not is in Christ is in the, is in the spirit but yet we're still trying to make the mind of Christ form here The mind of Christ is formed in your spiritual mind Amen. It's perfect in every thought Amen so how do I line up with that mind? I look at what has been done in the spirit. You guys leaving? Yeah, I gotta go. All right, I love you guys. Right. Amen. So when I look at who I am in the spirit, I'm able to keep my mind on the things of the spirit. I'm able to keep my mind on the truth. When I keep my mind on the Spirit, I'm keeping my mind on the real reality that is really before me right now. Because the spiritual reality is the greater reality than the reality that we see. Because everything in the Spirit drives what goes on here. But if I live in the Spirit, then I'm able to drive what goes on in, in this body then I'm able to drive and control what tries to take power over this body. I cannot have power trying to live in this and be this fleshly body. Or else I'm just going to be sitting trying to do things in the flesh when the cup needs to be clean on the inside. So, what is the truth then about who I am in the Spirit? The truth is, you're one with Jesus Christ. The truth is, who is Jesus? He has power, all power, all authority. Everything he asks is his. He's holy, spotless, above reproach, righteous, without blemish. He has all things. Everything is in submission to him. All riches and glory. And you are one with him. You see, when you see rightly, it governs your mind to live rightly. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life. So when I gauge my mind to what is true in the spirit, then I'm able to be governed by the truth of Christ and where I sit and where I am and who I am in Christ. But I cannot identify flesh, which is actually going to go back to the dust, as to what is spiritual. The spirit, your spirit, the God through your spirit, because your spirit is one with God and it lives and moves through Christ. God enables, and it says that God quickens your mortal body so that it will obey this, your spirit, so that it will obey the Holy Spirit inside of your spirit. So your job is to live by the spirit. God's job is to quicken the flesh. It's not your job to try, your job is to stir yourself up. Your job is to obey your spirit. And God quickens the flesh. And God moves through the flesh. And God enables the flesh, heals the flesh. Because it's his body anyway. That this body is the Lord's body. 
Everybody awake? Mm -hmm. Amen. So, when the enemy comes, did you want to say something? No, I, I want to. I want to be like. Oh, like the, the, the guy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like teaching. <laughs> teaching. <laughs> and for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers therefore with you, know that we run in a race, run all. But one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain. Not, and every man that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Therefore, to run, not uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beats the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that any means I preach to others myself and be a castaway. Amen. So you put your flesh under subjection. Amen. That's good. See, I'm glad God moved on him tonight because I had not, I had all the stuff, but nothing oh, happened. <laughs> so I'm putting I'm my. Here, try to do that one. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll try to figure it out like, one day. No way, you come with like 50 moisture. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm putting my body. That's good right there. That's a good place to keep to to skyrocket off too. So I'm putting my body into subjection to what? The spirit. In the spirit, you and Christ are one. Mm -hmm. So I am taking hold. I am taking this body and making it my slave. That's what Paul, remember Paul said that? Yep. I take this body and make it my slave. He's, he's not talking, he's not living, in, he's not living by the flesh and saying, I'm going to try to beat myself up and then you know, and, 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 and it's gonna, you know what I mean? He's living in the spirit. He's feeling in the spirit. He receives in the spirit. And he's able to control the flesh without being dictated by the flesh. Because when you live in the flesh, you go by feeling. When you live in the flesh, you go by seeing. When you live in the flesh, you go by hearing. But when I live in the spirit, I go by none of that. And I go by what's true in the spirit. And I take over what is going on in the flesh. And I don't let it take me captive. What keeps me from being captive? The truth. The truth about what? About Christ and where I and where I sit in the spirit. You are seated with heavenly places and heavenly places with Christ. So I don't want to hear you come to this altar and say, "Well, I'm just not feeling the presence of God." I'm just not feeling it. Because you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. And notice when you read, when you, whenever we talk about these things, the presence of God comes. Why? Because I'm taking my conscience and I'm making it aware to what is true in the spirit instead of to what is aware in the flesh. My mind is, is coming off what I see and what I hear. And my mind is gauging to the awesome truth and glory that we have in Christ. Amen. So we need... To, we can walk in the glory. We, he said it. And the power. He did it himself. And he said we can do that and even greater. So when we're building ourselves up, we have to stop building ourselves up here. Amen. When I'm building myself up, I'm recognizing what's here in the spirit. And I'm denouncing what tries to come here. I'm not identifying what I see, what I hear, and what I think. And I'm making what I think and what I see and what I hear slaved Amen. to what is true in the spirit. So he says, man, and I need this. There's a scripture for it too. It's in Jude. And it says, build yourselves up in the most holy faith. And then Paul says, quicken yourself. Stir up the gift inside of you. Amen. Jesus says, revelation. Amen. Drop Take off your dirty garments and stir yourself up. Quicken yourself. I, know, I remember there was a time I asked God, how do I quicken myself? I'm trying, God. I'm sitting here and I want it. So what do I do? 
Do I, you want me to shout for it? And I'm trying to figure out, because I don't have a revelation of the Spirit and revelation of Christ, I'm trying to sit here in the Spirit, God, uh, uh, you know, all these things, and nothing's happening. Because I'm doing all these things, yet there's no purpose inside of here. I'm doing all these things, and there's no spiritual authority driving it. There's no spiritual authority guarding it. There's no spiritual authority anointing it. In the Spirit, you are anointed, and everything that you do in the Spirit is anointed, so live by the Spirit. Amen. So when I live by the Spirit, I don't fulfill the deeds of the flesh. Amen. Why? Because you're in the Spirit. Because when I do... <laughs> oh, that's your point. That's good, though. No, it's true, though, I'm just because uh, I, I was going to get there, but I like it. It's cute. But... <laughs> No, no, I was saying it was awesome. Hey, but why? Yeah, no, it was good. <laughs> so <laughs> when I was doing the deeds of the flesh, I was, but I, see, when I was, when I did, fulfilled the deeds of the flesh, I was controlled by the flesh. I was driven by what I see because I didn't know the reality that was inside of me. I didn't know the seed of God. I didn't know what Christ did at the cross. So I was driven and I was slave to everything I heard and saw because I don't know the truth. The unbelievers, they cannot walk in what you walk in because they don't see. Okay. Wow, okay. Wait, wait, wait. What? Oh, you got the new one? Oh, you want the other one? If it's working, yeah. Hello? Because I don't really like this whole wire thing. Awesome. I know it's late, guys. I'm trying to not be too long. But no, no. No, Aaron's. Oh, never mind. Gonna rip my head off after. No, I'm just kidding. I love you, baby. Anyway. <laughs> so, when I lived in the flesh, I didn't know, have a revelation of the Spirit. And where did revelation of the Spirit come through? Christ. It taught me how to live by the Spirit. So, now I'm not being controlled by these things that are getting me to fulfill sin. And now. I'm living in this place where I have all power and authority and I'm able to, to do all things and then I'm able to take hold of the mind that governs this part. Amen. Amen. The mind that lives by the Spirit. Amen. The soul that lives by the Spirit. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. Your heart, the, we, we speak metaphorically about the heart. Your heart, your beating heart, with that pumps the blood into your body doesn't feel it doesn't intend it doesn't will what we're saying what we say about the heart is we're talking about the spirit we're talking about your spirit your heart is remember that one verse create in me a new heart give me a ref what does it say refresh my spirit right give me a right spirit within so when we feel, and when, because now we're, see, the, the reach, the, the ones who are not repent, in repent, that do not come to repentance and are not washed by the blood, they, they can't live by their heart because their heart is not made, their, I mean, their, their spirit is not made new now. They're, made, they're, they're formed in the image of God, but they're not one with the Holy Ghost. They're not one with Christ. But now, our spirit has been made new. This soul has not been made new yet. Our spirit has been made new. But when I live by what has been made new, the new creation, the soul comes into subjection to that and is renewed daily as I go by the spirit. Amen. So I no longer live by, by thinking and theologies and ways and formulas. I live by the spirit. What, do I, what are you feeling in the spirit, brother? What do you see in the spirit? That's what, how I live. I don't live by, well, you know, technically it says this and, and blah, 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 blah. Now, I know we need to know the word. Don't, every, we need to know the word. But the word teaches me and dictates me because we have our soul where things try to come in. And I know ungodliness. Therefore, I denounce that so that I protect my spirit from being defiled. And when... And everything else is protected. So I know the law. I, I don't, I'm not under the law, but I know the law so that I know what sin is. 
I know the law so that I know what unrighteousness is. So that when it comes into my mind, I realize I am now made new. That is of the flesh. And I cast that down. And I count it all dung. And I live by the Spirit. Amen. This is important. That's right. Because we, build, we have to build ourselves up daily. It says build yourselves up daily in Christ. So when I look at Christ, I'm looking at everything that I hold. Amen. Everything that I was created to be. Amen. Everything that I am when I look at Christ. Amen. And my spirit is one with Christ. Right. And he lives and breathes through me. That's right. In the spirit. So when I live by that, I have all access. I know, I know what is is God's intention through my intention that in, in, in my spirit. Amen. I know God's will through my will that is one with his will through my spirit. See, it's not my... See, your soul has a will and your spirit has a will. When I go by my soul, I'm going by the flesh because my soul only knew the was baptized in the flesh from the beginning. Now my spirit is now made new and when I take that, I, I take that all into subjection over here. And then my flesh learns to live by the spirit. This flesh is going to die. That's right. And you know what? I was almost going to say, name this message, let the flesh decay. Because when you, think, when, you, when you live for this here, then you start living for riches. When you live for this here, then you start living for what you can get now. When you live for this here, you start living to just merely survive with this flesh and bone. But when you live by the Spirit and you know your inheritance and you know where you are and you know who you are and you know what you have, you don't care if you die. That's right. Death doesn't matter to you. Death is gain to you. That's right. Because then everything that you know as reality through the truth becomes reality literally before your eyes. Amen. The Father that you have and that you're one with who's seated right here in your spirit becomes reality forever. So, I'm going to close here, but this is, this is basic stuff that Paul speaks about here and there. This is basic stuff that even Christ mentions. This is basic stuff that all, even Timothy mentioned. And they always mentioned it. They mentioned Christ, but then they mentioned the Spirit. They mentioned the Spirit, and they mentioned the flesh. They mentioned sin, and they mentioned what is, what is of God. Godliness and ungodliness. These... All, all of these things in this realm is what, we, is what we live by and what we don't live by. Anything else, we cast it away. We cast it away. Amen. So when I look at Christ, I, 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 my character now is gauged to his character. My ableness my pa the power that I have is gauged to his power and his authority. So when the enemy comes and he comes in with something in your mind, you remember what you have. You get stuck, thoughts, things come to your mind, and you get too much, in, you get too great in the flesh. Then you go right to the throne of grace and you cast that down. You remember the forgiveness of God. And then you get right back into where you were. And you remember. Because here's the thing that sin does. Here's the thing that unrighteousness does. It blinds you. Because it says it's possible to blind you once again to the truth. It's not once saved, always saved. You're saved by the blood of the Lamb. But what if you became blinded again to the blood of the Lamb? And the power thereof. You're in trouble. <laughs> what... And, and this is serious, guys, because people think that you're saved. Yeah, you're saved by the blood, but you can get so far into deception that your mind becomes blinded to the truth and a delusion comes upon you. They say, oh, yeah, well, you know, blah, 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 you know, if you sin. Listen, it's not even about that. If your heart turns away from God, God, therefore, cover, he covers your eyes to give you what you're desiring. To give you the, the unrighteousness or whatever you're going after. Or whatever delusion you're going after. He gives it to you. And that's how people fall away. That's how this last day's church. This is, that's where, this, this is where a lot, of, a lot of places are going right now. 
and a strong delusion is starting to come upon people and they're realizing the stuff that's happening in their life and they're like, how is this happening? I thought I was good with God. And this is God's grace time right there to get them in repentance. Wake them up. To get them to come back and, and go to the real truth instead of following deception. The, the, the illusion is a blessing for them. Why? Because they knew the truth, they see it in the Bible, and then they see the opposite happening in their life, and they're like, oh, maybe, it's not the tr maybe I'm not living in the truth. And that's their chance for repentance right there. Do you know that repentance is actually a gift? Mm -hmm. Repentance is not something that everybody just has at any moment of the day. It's something that God gives you. He gives you a chance right there. He gives you a chance. He opens your heart. He, he cuts the hard heart open and breaks it and gives you a chance to come to Him and, and take off the illusion. Amen. And this is why and this is why we cast down arguments. This is why we cast down all conversations and thoughts that exalt itself above the knowledge of God. So that we can keep the glorious thing, the glorious person that we are one with in, in, in the spirit. And we don't fall to deception. That's right. Because deception can come your way without, without, without want. Because you decided, let me venture off. So as we build us, keep ourselves built up in the spirit, we need to stay away from, from living by this soul realm. So when, we live, so when we live by the spirit, we protect ourselves. It says protect your heart. It says guard your heart. What is this saying? Protect your spirit. Protect your heart. How do I do that? I build myself up in the Lord Jesus Christ daily. When a, when a fiery dart comes at me, I don't submit to it, and I, and I, and I say, and I, and, I, and, I, and I remember who I am by the blood of Christ, and by the righteousness of Christ, and I stand. When I'm, when I'm believing God for something, I stand. I build myself up, because you, 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 we have everything. The Bible says, if you are one of mine, you have everything you ask. But don't you think the enemy's going to come and still try to stop that? Don't you think he's still going to try to bring things and say, Oh, no, that's not going to happen. Man. Come on, relax. Chill out. That's prosperity gospel stuff. Like, come on. Well, the enemy's going to come and say, Oh, no, come on. You're never going to get set free from that or you, or you get real. Oh, come on. You know, and he says all these stuff. But we have to remember. We have to build ourselves back up in Christ and say, No, this is who we are. No, I'm one with him. That's not who I am. That can't affect me. That, can't, that doesn't have power over me. That cannot, that, cannot, that cannot compromise me. And when I do that, the Spirit of God comes and mortifies the deeds of the flesh himself. And when I do that, God makes, when I stand like that, God makes my blessing. God makes my, my, my righteousness. God makes my ability, my power, my authority real. You see, when Moses, God showed me this, this, the vision of Moses when, in the Bible when he was standing there. And they were holding his hands up. And there was a battle between Israel and another nation. What was that nation? You guys remember? Because I don't remember. Yeah, that's what I thought it was, but I didn't want to. Because, you know, you got some religious people on YouTube if this goes on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, something nights, yeah. <laughs> John, <laughs> but the is Israel, and this is how it is. Your spirit comes to war with the flesh because the spirit and the flesh are at enmity with each other. So your spirit and your flesh, the spirit and the flesh are coming at war, and here's you, Moses. And what did they do when Moses, what did Moses do when he was standing there? Aaron and the other guy, whatever his name is, I think it was her or something, they rolled a rock a big boulder, and put it under Moses. And they said, sit on it, because he had to keep his hands up, because that was the prophecy, keep your hands up, and Israel will win. So they told him to sit on the rock, and they said, 
her or Ben or whatever his name is, I don't know what it is. Hold up one arm. What is it? Yeah, whatever. And then Aaron hold the other arm up. So you have he's sitting on the rock and these two guys holding up holding up his his hands. So he had help. You know what God told me? He said, The rock is the word of God. The rock is what Christ did is, is Christ, is the finished work of the cross. And the one guy actually is, is a, it represents the Father's heart, and the other one represents the Spirit of God. So he's sitting on the Word, which is keeping him from falling, and he's able to keep his arms up to keep the battle winning through the Father's heart, and through the Spirit of God. Amen. And this is how it is for you. That's right. You need to sit on the rock. You need to stand on the finished work of the cross, on Christ the Word. Yeah. You need to stand, and you need to realize what, because, because it's not only what you're, who you're one with, but it's about how now, the revelation now of God's heart towards us, which keeps us. It's, you know what it says when it says, keep yourself built up in, 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 the, in the Spirit? It also, in, in your most holy faith, it says, it also says, stay rooted in the love of God. Stay rooted in the love of God. Amen. So when I'm rooted in God's heart towards me, how he feels about me, how he calls me beloved, how he's had grace on me, how he has all mercy for me, Holy. that keeps me in the spirit. That keeps my one arm up. And the spirit of God keeps the rest of it. The word keeps, the word keeps me from falling. His heart keeps me going, and the Spirit makes it live. Amen. This is how it is. That's right. That is the revelation for you in this day, in this last hour, in the, in the urgency of the hour. It is the Word of God, the Father's heart, and the Spirit of God. The three in one acting on your life because of love. Love bought you that. That's right. Nothing else. What did Chain, what did chain say? He said, was it your idea? No, it was his idea. By grace. By, what is grace? It's not, oh uh, yeah, I can just say. No, grace is his, his, abil is his wantingness and, his, and his, his patience to dwell with you so that you can become one with him forever. Even though you've sinned. Even though we've fallen short. And, even, and he even saw us fall before he even made us. And he still said, yes. I'm going to make him. Yes, I'm going to create him. He still said yes to you. He knew you were going to fall. He knew you were going to sin because everybody in here has sinned. Everybody in here has a past. He knew that was going to happen before he created you. And he said yes still. He didn't have to do it. Because religion can say, well, how could God create something that is going to sin against him? That's not a just God. But the heck with religion. We have God's love. That's right. Stay rooted in that. Stay rooted with how he feels about you. And it keeps you. And it keeps you going to him. And then you ask for things. Then you ask for the, fa then you ask for the Father to come down and touch you. You ask for the Father to bring his, to bring his the inheritance. And you're able to stand. Until, because it says, because Jesus said, believe and do not waver. He said, when you believe, do not waver. He said to Peter, walking on the water. Walk on the water. Come on. And he walked on the water and he fell in. Because why? He believed, but he wavered. He let doubt and he let unbelief come in. Because why? Because he didn't, he stopped, he came, because it's just like, this is a metaphor for us. Because, and it's to say it was us, right? We were living in the spirit, but then we gave into the soul realm. Then we gave in to the flesh realm. We need to stay in the spirit. We need to stay believing because I can only truly believe God and truly be in full faith. Because he said it right there. You have the full faith of Christ in you. You have all the faith you need. He said just the faith of a mustard seed takes down a mountain. But it's not here. It's not here. It's not here. It's in your spirit. So live by the spirit. And when you're living by the Spirit, your mind is so focused on the Spirit that it can't doubt. 
Because doubt only comes from the flesh. Because all your mind is so on the spirit that it's not possible to doubt anymore. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Get your mind. See rightly so that your mind can be governed by the spirit. Right. And then you'll be able to live rightly and everything comes naturally. Hallelujah. Believe and do not waver. Whatsoever you ask shall be done. And when you ask it, believe that you receive it. Do you know 90% of the church can't live like that? That's right. You know 90% 90 of the church cannot believe and receive that they have it? You know what God's saying when he says believe and receive and, and, and believe that you have it already? He's saying, you know what it is for you, son and daughter? Yes and amen. It's done for you. Yeah. You, are, you are mine. You are washed. How much more washed do you want to be from sin and unrighteousness? How much more washed do you want your heart to be? I, I, have, I, I, I beloved, you're my beloved. And, I, and my desire and my hope and my plan is all for you. But you can forget about that tomorrow. That's why you need to stand on this truth. That's why you need to stand on the cross. Stand on, how he fe- on, on his heart about you. Stand and rely and let God do the rest in your flesh. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we will not live by this flesh and bone. We will not live by what we feel here. We will li- not live by what we hear from man's wisdom. We will not live by what we see. We will not look at the bank account. We will not look at the action. We will not look at whatever we see, at the, at, the, at the disease, and let it dictate us. We will let the truth dictate our lives, and we will change the reality that this flesh tries to make me think is true. I thank you, Lord. We have all power and authority over this realm. There's three realms, Lord. And we're not in the earthly realm. We're not in the middle realm. We're on the top realm. Where Christ is seated. Sitting next to the Father that has all power over creation Amen. and has created creation. Amen. Amen. We're seated next to all that. Hallelujah. We're seated, seated near the, in the three chairs. Right. And we have the backing of heaven. We have the anointing. And nothing can hinder that. Amen. Not air, not longitude, not latitude, not a word, not a person, not the devil, not sin, not ungodliness. Nothing can keep us from the love of God but ourselves. Amen. Only we can keep us from the love of God. But if we believe it, and we don't live by what our flesh thinks or our acts, we live by the Spirit and faith comes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We shall build ourselves up in the Lord Jesus Christ daily, God. Every thought, Lord, that comes to, comes to mind, that comes to the soul, every attack, everything that's done in the flesh, Amen. we cast it down. Right. And we, we lift up the knowledge of God. Yes. We lift up the knowledge of our spirit man. We lift up the knowledge of our oneness with Christ. We lift up the knowledge of the Father's heart. And we lift up the knowledge of the Spirit of God that enables all power and authority to make it happen on this realm. Amen. Amen. 